Hello, blacksmiths and woodworkers. Have you ever been confused by the steel numbering system? Wonder what all those numbers and letters mean? Well, let's take a quick look at what the steel numbering system is and how it works. There are three systems that we are, classifications of steel rather, that we're gonna look at today. They are carbon steels, alloy steels, and tool steels. We'll start with the carbon steels. These are steels that the main alloying element is carbon, and you will find generally a four-digit code. Here we have 1018. So the 10 stands for a plain carbon steel. 10, 11, and 15 all designate plain carbon steels. The last two digits in the numbering system refer to the nominal carbon content in tenths of a percent. Thus, this 1018 has nominally 0.18% carbon. Now that's very little carbon, it's very low carbon, or what we would call mild steel. The next classification we're going to talk about is alloy steel. And alloy steels have other alloying elements besides carbon that help with hardenability, that make them easier to heat treat, deeper hardening, or various other properties. Let's consider 4140. This is probably the most common medium carbon steel that's used in the U.S. today. The first two digits, 41, refer to what the main alloying elements are besides carbon. In this case, it's chromium and molybdenum, both of which add strength, toughness, and aid in hardenability. The last two digits, again, refer to the nominal carbon content in tenths of a percent. So this is a 0.4% carbon. This is what we would call a medium carbon alloy steel. Um, I used 4140 for quite a few years for our axes and our adzes. A lot of other blacksmiths use it for similar tooling to great effect. It's very common, readily available, and inexpensive in a wide range of sizes and shapes. We have, a little over a year ago, switched our production of our larger axes and edges to 4150. This is a very similar alloy, a little harder to find. This is, a, the 41 indicates, it's also a chromium and molybdenum steel with, this time, 0.5% carbon, a little bit higher carbon content. Carbon is one of the main alloying elements that allows for harden, hardening, hardenability. So we have found that the little slight edge in hardenability that the 4150 gives makes it a superior steel selection for our axes and edges. It's still extremely tough for a chopping tool, but we can get a little more hardness out of it, a little bit harder edge. The next steel, alloy steel we will consider is 5160. First two digits, again, um, indicate the main alloying element. In this case, it's chromium. And the 51 series has between 0.8% uh, and 1% chromium. The 60 indicates a 0.6% carbon content, a little more even than the 4150. This would be in the classification of a high carbon steel. We use 5160 for our chisels, our gouges, and our smaller carving axes and adzes. We also sell this steel in a variety of round bar from 5 eighths up to one and a quarter inch. Now we have another example of an alloy steel. This is 52100. This is a, an old steel. It's been around for a long time. It is commonly referred to as ball bearing steel. It's used uh, extensively for bearings. Now, the 52 indicates that it's also a chromium steel, but this time a higher chromium content. It's going to have almost 1.5% chromium. Not quite enough to be a stainless steel, but it's a very high chromium content. It's also a much higher carbon content. And notice we've got three digits, 100. This indicates 1% carbon. This is a very high carbon steel. We sell a variety of different sizes of industrial drops uh, in 52100 from an industry that's upstream of a bearing factory. And the third classification we want to look at is what's referred to as tool steels. 
Tool steels are made in smaller quantities with tighter quality control for very specific purposes than your carbon and alloy steels. And they're usually designated with a letter and a number. Some common tool, tool steels are O1, A2, D2, W1, H13, and S7. And the letters stand for something about it. In this case, O1, the O stands for an oil hardening steel. The A series is air hardening. The D series is also generally air hardening, but it's used for cold work. W series is water hardening. H series, like H13, is a hot work tool steel. We use H13 for our punches and our drifts in forging axes and adzes. And then S7 is a shock resisting steel. The S series is a shock resisting steel. Uh, the only tool steel we use in the production of our tools is some German made O1 tool steel for our smaller carving knives and our spoon hooks. So how do you know what steel you have? Well, it's impossible to tell by looking at it. You can't taste it, you can't smell it. You can take a piece of steel and grind it and observe the spark pattern and get a general idea of carbon content and perhaps some alloying elements if you compare the spark string with something known. But the main way to know is something called the certification of analysis and tests. So all the steel that we buy new, we get a certification of analysis and tests with each shipment. So this is from some inch and a quarter round bar 5160 that we have in stock that we use for our smaller axes and adzes and we also have for sale. And here is the actual tested um, recipe, the carbon content, phosphorus, um, silicon, nickel, chromium, molybdenum, all the different alloying elements right there. So we have a variety of steel that we buy that we use for our own production and also for sale. If you'll check out our website, lunnontools.com, under the steel sales tab, you'll find where you can look at our selection of 4150, 5160, and 52100 steel. We've also just acquired a supply of 4340. This is some aircraft grade 4340 steel in 10 inch round. We'll be cutting this up and offering it um, for custom sizes. Say you wanna make some power hammer dies, this is a really good steel for that sort of work. Hope this has helped understand a little bit and unravel some of the mystery around the steel numbering system.